boom and here we go final segment of assassin's creed origins discovery tour uh we finished egypt pyramids alexandria and daily life we're on to romans uh if you checked out the original what do you call that the first impressions uh you'll see this crucifixion section done and that was pretty uh that was pretty educational and gnarly but we will finish off the last four here we go roman military equipment i like how they suggest that the mount is your friend or that the horse to call your mount that's funny right there where's my friend insurance policy one way of conquering death i like that i believe we read that before so that's cool why thank you egypt was first because you earn yeah read that before I guess because we're already at the end, it's like, it's just giving redos right now. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Roman military. The strength of Rome was directly dependent on its military supremacy and fundamentally militaristic society. Makes sense. Regular citizens comprised mostly of farmers and herders, joined to protect their land and families. In return for their service, members of this civic army were allowed to vote. Trained to be highly disciplined and obedient to superior officers, citizen soldiers developed a deep sense of loyalty to their city. Hmm, not unlike, to, uh, not unlike today's U.S. military. Um... They often say that actually U.S. is like the modern day Rome, so that's interesting. Yeah, look at those guys. Civilian, uh, it's like enlistment the from World War II. The armor of a Roman foot soldier was intrinsically linked to his social status and wealth. Chainmail was the most commonly used type of armor. Scale armor, made famous in today's media, came into use after Caesar's time. Foot soldiers carried large and oblong shields, while the cavalry used smaller ones of Greek origin. Hmm. Soldiers were expected to carry their own kit, including the tools required for the construction of forts and tents. Oh, wow. Roman soldiers used the same types of weapons. The stomach and face were the most targeted parts of the body. As such, a legionary was equipped with two close combat weapons, a dagger and a short sword, known as a gladius. Hmm. One of the most ingenious Roman weapons was the javelin. Its pyramid-shaped tip pierced the body, while its iron shank was designed to break upon impact, oh stopping my. the enemy from throwing it back. That's, that's pretty smart. During their conquests, the Romans regularly transformed enemy technologies to add to their own formidable arsenal. After capturing a Carthaginian vessel, the Romans adopted its better features and constructed a superior fleet of ships. Adapting heavy artillery designs from Greek models aided the Romans in building catapults and ballistae. The latter became an iconic symbol of Roman warfare. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So they learn from their enemies and they build better products. Mm. It's like a business tactic. I like it. But they often say that uh, war and business are quite similar. Uh, in, in marketing, they were like, oh, you should read The Art of War. It'll give you insight into business affairs. Read it, it's not that good. It's like, blah. For somebody who hasn't studied it, I guess... It would be like like mind blowing, but if you're if you're under if you understand tactics then it's not really that great. Welcome to Roman Forts. Ooh, Roman Forts. The size of a Roman military camp, known as a castrum, varied significantly depending on how many soldiers it needed to accommodate. However, they all shared common characteristics in design and construction, such as this fort before you, located in Cape Chersonesos. Hmm, looks similar to uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, the, the number three, I think, the Native American one. It's like, that's what the Americans used when they're, the British used, sorry, 
when they were in, shape, in America. The forts were heavily fortified by ramparts and a ditch system. The walls were reinforced with parapets, essentially an extension at the roof line which allowed a protective barrier for patrolling soldiers. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a trench. Depending on the availability of materials, some forts were built with stone, timbers, stacked turf, and particularly in the eastern part of the empire, baked brick. Hmm, cool. Access doors on all four sides were each flanked by guard towers. The commanding officer was positioned in the middle of the camp, giving him a clear view of the troops and the main gate. It's also the most uh, secure part, because if you get attacked on all sides, the center is the, uh, the furthest distance. Just saying. Along with sleeping barracks for the soldiers, the fort also had a granary that was expected to hold rations for a year or longer. Wow. Whole year. To ensure the health of the soldiers, every camp was equipped with medical staff and a hospital. A clean water supply with conduits for a bathhouse and latrines was included in the construction of every fort. Well, for sure, you're going to need that. Um, it's funny, you never think about that. Like, irrigation is so important because what do you do with your dirty water? They're looking for Alexander's tomb still to this day. I like those little tidbit things. I know I said that before, but that that's pretty cool. On the bottom corner. Welcome to the forts of Cyrenaica. There we go. Cyrenaica was a Libyan region under Roman control, gifted to Rome by one of Cleopatra's ancestors. The remains and foundations of ancient fortifications were discovered in the 19th century in the southwest of Cyrenaica, as well as a Roman garrison dating back to the first century CE. Evidence shows that these forts were of Libyan origin, rebuilt and modified by Roman engineers when Cyrenaica was part of the empire. Mmm, there you go. Stone was the most commonly used material to build forts in Egypt and Cyrenaica. Though no real proof of a fortress similar to the one before you has been uncovered in that region, the team chose to add it as a worthy and awe-inspiring end-of-game challenge for the player. Huh. I like I like that they tell you what they've like added in. That's pretty cool. Give you behind the scenes. Oh, there you go, another the one. The forts of Cyrenaica were intended to prevent invaders from gaining access to the main route that led to the country's five most important cities. These forts were built close to coastal plains and deserts for added defense. Three of these cities were recreated by the team: Balagre, Apollonia, and Cyrene. Had it existed, the fort before you would have protected the road leading to Balagre. Hmm. Mm, that's interesting. So these forts are like obstacles, I guess. But what's to stop people from going over the mountain? I guess the difficulty, but yeah. Other than reference to an attack around 404 CE and a military reorganization by Emperor Justinian during the 6th century CE, we still know little of the Roman military presence in Cyrenaica. <laughs> okay, cool. At least they're admitting that they don't know. That's cool. Last one, Roman aqueducts. Sounds great. And 31 BCE. Made it with a snake. Okay. go final one welcome to roman aqueduct 
Water management was taken seriously by the Romans. Cyrenaica benefited greatly from Roman administration with the construction of aqueducts and canals. For sure, you definitely need The source you. of water varied depending on the location. Many aqueducts were built at the foot of the mountains, offering greater flow from the melting snow. Mm, makes sense, using nature. The ability to transport water over a greater distance increased agricultural production. Some aqueducts were reported to be over seven kilometers in length. Where the Greeks of Libya originally focused mainly on olive trees and figs, which required less water, the advent of Roman aqueducts allowed for a far greater crop diversity. Every farm's water use was carefully scheduled. Hmm. It's pretty, pretty massive. It's crazy to think that they built those things, but if you look at cities today, you're like, oh, makes sense. Oh, missed it. The engineering methods used to create aqueducts were constantly reviewed, with a clear focus on exploiting the local environment. Materials, water usage, cleaning regulations, and a deep understanding of how to exploit gravity itself were all important concerns. Several fortresses were built to protect the aqueducts, basins, and cisterns. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Because if it's so important, you definitely need to keep protected. Those dogs look pretty nuts. They look like giant greyhounds or something. I wonder if those dogs are still around today. Additional water was collected with wells and cisterns, but aqueducts were the main supply of fresh water. The water was distributed based on the collective needs of the city before the private needs of an individual. Hmm, that's cool. I think Kendrick's got a... Kendrick Lamar's got a song that says, like, aqueduct. I wonder if he did some, like, prior research into this stuff, like, because it's essential, or what's the metaphor there? Who knows? Almost all aqueducts ended in a fountain where the water circulated to clean the streets and supply bathhouses and latrines, hmm. thus improving the cleanliness of Cyrenaica's cities. Makes sense. Boom! And we have it. There it is. We finished the entire discovery tour. Uh, granted, we did jump past some of the other stuff because I was like, eh. Can I jump in? Oh, sick. Yeah, because we were kind of like, eh. The architecture stuff was kind of boring, so like, they didn't really talk about anything esoteric with the pyramids, just like their assumptions of how it was built. I'm um, not really big into architecture stuff, as I'm not a math guy. But if, uh, if Vish, aka Ape Sage, uh, decides to play the game, definitely go check his out, because he'll wanna, he'll wanna watch those ones. Being a engineer tech himself. But yeah, so... Uh, we'll see what we play next. Might be a while because I'm I'm really into like um, reading these books right now. So if you want to check out more, definitely check out um, book suggestions on GodLightMyFire.com. There's also movie suggestions and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Till next time. Ooh, that must have hurt. Uh, take it easy. Whoa. Oh, oh, he didn't die. Oh, that's interesting. I totally thought he was gonna die. Uh, yeah, but actually, no. Now they think they're probably gonna play uh, one of those like story-driven games that's like uh, really linear, sort of like uh, Heavy Rain. There's also the the Battle of Los Angeles. I don't know, but we got some games coming up. I take back what I just said because I rethought it and I was like, actually, there are some cool games coming out. So yeah, stay tuned. Take it easy.